Hey everyone, I'm Michael Short. Come on, let's go outdoors. Well, welcome to a local storm pond. You can find these uh, scattered throughout the country in communities. And in some instances, they're used as fish stocking ponds. In other instances, they're strictly used to collect uh, storm water from the surrounding neighborhood. In this particular case, it wasn't all that long ago that a local angler had an encounter with a family that really didn't understand what they were doing was um, very dangerous by releasing uh, invasive species into this pond. So I started to walk over there and start up a casual conversation with them. And that's when I saw the koi in there and asked him, hey, what's going on with the koi? Told me he was going to um, dump them into the pond. He didn't have room anymore at his house for them. And I won't lie to you when I said I started to see red at that point. Um, this pond was amazing at one point. You could pull out 24 inch rainbows on a daily basis. And then when they killed it off, um, completely had to revert back to, you know, little fry and small, small 10 inch fish. So I, I got slightly confrontational with them and I told him, hey, you, you can't do this. This is a massive uh, invasive species problem in Alberta. They're getting into riverways. They're destroying habitats. It was multi-million dollar function just to get this back up and running and the city won't be able to afford this again if you do this. It may seem to be humane to release unwanted aquatic pets into a storm pond or other body of water, but it has been shown that these invasive species can have a real impact on our natural fish and plant habitats. For any pet of any exotic sort, you have to understand that it's not in native to this country, it's been brought in and it's here. So you have to be able to support the needs and support the, the huge responsibility that it is for that. And maybe before kids or families adopt pets like that, have that conversation, do that research. What are the impacts if this doesn't go right? What are the impacts if something goes wrong and Lord forbid it escapes into the wild? Um, and then maybe have a serious conversation and is this the right pet for us and is are we willing to deal with the repercussions of what could happen. In some cases our lakes and rivers are also home to species at risk and when pets like fish and vertebrates, aquatic plants, reptiles or mammals are introduced to the ecosystem this can put additional pressure on endangered or threatened species. Look at what we have for our country like we have some of the best outdoor opportunities in the world um let's not risk it let's not you know put any more damage that's already been done we've worked hard to get back to where we are and let's keep going uphill let's keep fighting that battle of course no discussion on invasive species would be complete without mentioning the notorious zebra mussel not only does it pose a threat to our native fish and plant species but these unwelcome visitors can cause severe damage to channel and irrigation systems across the country. So I guess education is the key. If you would like more information about the uh, dangers and the effects that a releasing aquatic invasive species into the natural environment can play, I'll put a link down below. Till next time, everyone, I'm Michael Short. Come on, let's go outdoors.